Hello, my name is Garchomp Pro, and I've been Challenger since set 2. In this video, I'll be going over my tier list for patch 13.14b, covering the best comps as well as how to play them. So first I'd like to start off by quickly going over my comp tier list. In the S tier we have the Aphelios compositions as well as the Auction reroll composition. These are all kind of under the same umbrella, I'll be talking about them today. Ravenous Hunter did get nerfed, but Warwick got buffed, so it's still really strong. I'll be talking about this today. Double Trouble Talia. Talia did get bug fixed, so she's a bit worse, but it's still a very strong composition if you have the right setup. I'll be talking about this today. Belveth plus Ari. Belveth got nerfed, but Ari got buffed, so it's still very good if you're trying to fast 9 for those legendary units. Six Sorcerer got some huge buffs. Lux got buffed. Swain got buffed. Terrick got buffed, so it's a really strong composition. If you're trying to reroll Velkaz, I highly recommend playing the Six Sorcerer variation too. Uh, so I'll be talking about this today. Noxus Darius is still kind of just chugging along doing the same thing it's been doing. You hit like a Darius or a Katarina out of an early orb, it's going to be really powerful. You can start win streaking, uh, and it's just a really like secure way to top four and can even top one. So still very good. I'll be talking about that today. Invoker Karma's kind of come into the limelight this patch. It's a bit worse than it was before the B patch, but it's still very good. With buffs to Karma and Soraka and Tarek, the comp is a lot stronger this patch. And so people have been playing it to pretty good success. I'll be talking about this comp today. In the A tier, we have a bunch of different compositions. The Gwen plus Azir Flex and the Shadow Isles Gwen are both viable, but I do think the Gwen Aphilios variation is a bit better. Azir Lux is still good. It's the same comp that we've had before, where you do carry Azir Lux and then have Nasus as your main tank. Volcus Plasona reroll with Multicaster is still viable, but I do think the Six Sorcerer variation is better, so I prefer to play that instead. Riftwalk Cassidy and Riftwalk got a buff this patch, so it's quite good. Uh, just playing around Cassidy plus Soraka is quite strong, uh, so it's definitely a viable comp right now. Pult over Zeri and Four Gunner Zeri. I will be talking about Zeri today. Zeri's kind of back. She's gotten some pretty big buffs, uh, making her a lot more viable. And now you can actually run her reasonably on a composition and actually do well, like win games with her. Built Difference back. Prismatic Built Different is quite good now. I wouldn't play Gold Built Different. Gold Built Different sucks, but Prismatic Built Different is definitely good. I'll be talking about this today. Garen is back as well. Garen rerolls quite good. Uh, you do play it a bit differently than you did a couple patches ago, so I will be talking about Garen reroll today. Challenger Kaisa plus Yasuo is still fine, but it's a bit weaker than it was last patch. It's just not as good into the meta, and Yasuo did get a small nerf. It's still a viable composition, though. I still see it top four in my games. The A- tier, we have a bunch of different compositions in here. Uh, the ones of note here is the Ionia compositions are a bit worse. They're just not great into the meta, and they were kind of on the downswing anyways. If you want to play around Karma, just play Invoker Karma. If you want to play around Yasuo plus Kaisa, just play Challengers. Jinx Reroll got, uh, got nerfed this patch due to the fact that Robotic Arm got nerfed. It's still a good composition that can definitely top 4, but it's a lot weaker. Tristana Reroll has kind of taken the place of Kale as the best 1 cost reroll. Kale got pretty big nerfs. It's still definitely viable, but it's a lot worse. Tristana Reroll, I'd say, is a bit better than Kale Reroll, uh, but it's still not amazing, but you can definitely do well with it. Forzon Zeri plus Urgot, I'd say, is a bit worse than the other Zeri variations that I'll be talking about today, but it's definitely viable. Cast in Soraka and Show plus Mal's reroll are two new compositions that I recently just added that have kind of come in in this patch. Uh, so I'll be talking about those two compositions today. The B tier composition is just not that great. They're usually just not as good. We see the Rogue variations here. Rogue is just kind of struggling this patch, not as good. After nerf, Zed is, is not great. It can definitely do stuff, but it's not amazing. You know, Vertical Demacia, Vertical Sh Shurima, just not great. Wouldn't recommend playing towards the B tier compositions unless you get a really high roll spot for them. The S and A tier compositions are, of course, always great to play, and the A minus tier compositions, if you have a spot, can definitely do well. The only of these that I ordered was the S tier compositions, so this is like a rough ordering of the S tier compositions. Uh, the rest of these tiers are unordered. The first comp or comps I'd like to talk about is going to be the various Aphelios variations. Now, Aphelios is really strong right now. He's just a strong unit and is quite flexible. There's a few different variations you can play around him, so you can be pretty flexible with whatever items and units you have. The core of any Aphelios composition is going to be Aphelios plus Ash plus Sejuani plus Terek. Of course, Ash just synergizes nicely with the Deadeye. She also gives attack speed. Sejuani synergizes nicely with Ash and provides us frontline. And Terek is going to be really good to support the rest of the team, giving us that two Targon to increase Aphelios' healing, plus units like Sejuani's shielding. In terms of itemization, Aphelios really wants to have a Rageblade plus two. The second item generally wants to be either a Deathblade or an Infinity Edge. Deathblade is a lot better, but you can run Infinity Edge in that case. And then the final item has a lot more variations to it. You can go Giant Slayer, you can go Guard Breaker, you can go Infinity Edge if you already have a Deathblade. Runons is fine in this slot. Gunblade is fine, although you do lack a bit of damage with Gunblade, so I would only go Gunblade if you have something like a damage augment, like Social Distancing to buff up his damage a bit more. And then Titans is actually quite good as well if you have a lot of Frontline. With a Rageblade, he's going to stack up the Titans relatively fast and be able to just pump up a bunch of damage because it's going to give him a bunch of additional AD and then also make him tankier. In terms of tank itemization, you'll generally just be throwing whatever tank items you have on your Sejuani. Again, that's going to be stuff like Dragon's Claw, Bramble Vest, Redemption, Vow, Stoneplate, and Warmogs. 
Looking at this board right here, there's a couple add-ons we can immediately make. Shen for more frontline. We can also add on Scion for more frontline as well, because they synergize quite nicely here. And then Lissandra for three Freljord. And this is a nice core of an Aphelios build right here. What we can then do is run a board something like this, running in this last slot, either being Senna or we can run a Soraka. These are going to be really nice because Soraka, of course, giving us four Targons, is going to buff up the Shen, Taric, and Sejuani shielding, and Aphelios is healing. And then Senna synergizes really well with Targon due to the fact that her ult, of course, shields your entire team. I think Senna's slightly better than Soraka here, but obviously you won't always hit a Senna, so Soraka is a bit better to run if you don't have the Senna. I think if you're running a variation like this, I'd love to have Titans on my Aphelios just due to the fact that you have so much frontline on this board and you're really just relying on Aphelios to solo carry, so you don't want him to get picked off immediately. The one weakness of this composition here is that you are lacking a little bit on damage, right? Aphelios is really the only unit doing a lot of damage here. So that's why I do think of the three variations I'm going to show today, this is the weakest one because it's a solo carry. Of course, you can simply just run this board right here and just run an Urgot and play something like this. The Urgot can give additional damage and you can throw, you know, damage items on the Urgot, stuff like Titans and Bloodthirster uh, to buff him up. It is a little awkward that we have three out of two Deadeye, but honestly, it's fine. Like four Deadeye is a decent trait, but you don't need to run it. A lot of times you're running a Synergy bot anyways. So you can definitely run a board like this. But if you're running Urgot and Aphelios, you'll probably be playing the four Deadeye variation that I'll talk about in a minute. In fact, I'll talk about the four Deadeye variation right now. On the four Deadeye variation, the core here is going to be Aphelios, Urgot, Akshan, and Ash for the four Deadeye. And then we're simply just running Sejuani for the frontline. And then we'll be running two out of three of Scion, Shen, and Taric. The reason for this, of course, is that on my board right now, I have nine units, so you need to drop one of these. I think Scion is always going to be always going to be a play if you manage to hit the Scion. That being said, you won't always have a Scion, so you can just run Shen Taric for enough frontline beforehand. But you can simply just drop the Shen or the Taric once you hit the Scion. I think dropping the Shen is slightly better, but you know, if you have a Shen too, you may want to keep him instead of the Taric. Of course, in all these compositions, Shen can hold the frontline items instead of Sejuani as well. In terms of best items for Urgot. I think Bloodthirster plus two is going to be best. You can also go Hand of Justice for a healing item. Titans is going to be his best item. You can actually throw random tank items on him as well, but usually Urgot wants to have these like hybrid damage tank items. Edge of Night actually does quite well on him uh, in addition to that. So really Titans, Edge of Night, Bloodthirster, and Hand of Justice are his best. He can use spare damage items, stuff like Infinity Edge, Deathblade is okay on him. But generally, if I have spare raw damage items on this build, I actually prefer to just throw them on Auction. And you can actually pretty effectively just duo carry an Auction 2 with your Philios, so stuff like Deathblade, Infinity Edge, Renault's Hurricane on your Auction, and kind of forego some of the Urga items here. So if you have an excess of 80 items, I enjoy running this variation right here. You're going to do a lot of damage. This variation probably stabilizes the easiest of all the Philios variations. You can just start killing stuff really easy with 4 Deadeye. You're going to take good losses, so it's a really great top 4 composition. That being said, it definitely has the lowest cap out of all of them due to the fact that this comp really just doesn't have the room to play like legendary units. Like this is your level 9 board right here. We only have one legendary on it. Really hard to cap out this board and get a first, but it's definitely pretty easy to get a top 4 with this. And then finally, we have my favorite Aphelios variation, which is actually going to be Aphelios plus Gwen. This variation is a little weird whenever you first hear about it, but it actually works quite well in practice. There's a bunch of different ways to play this Aphelios Gwen comp. This is my favorite one right here, just running the Sejuani Taric Shen frontline with Aphelios Ash, and then Soraka for 3 Targon with Senna with your Gwen. This is just really nice because 3 Targon is going to be buffing up the Shadow Isle shield, making Gwen really, really tanky. Whenever you have your Gwen here, you're going to want a healing item, plus 2. Hand of Justice is my favorite healing item, but Bloodthirster and Gunblade are both good. In terms of the plus 2, another Hand of Justice is really good. Titans is fantastic on her, makes her even tankier. Edge of Night's okay, although I don't love it. I'll prefer to just go like Healing or Titans if I want something more defensive-oriented. Death Gap, Jewel Gauntlet are great. Guardbreaker and Giant Slayer are okay. But generally, I'd rather have my Guardbreaker and Giant Slayer on my Aphelios usually. Of course, there's a couple adaptations you can make to this variation right here. One thing you can do is simply just play a Lissandra instead of the Soraka. I don't love it quite as much, but it definitely is viable because three Freljord is really powerful. Especially if you have like a Freljord plus one, you should always be aiming to play four Freljord. So on any of these variations, if you have, you know, a Freljord heart, make sure make sure that you're playing that four Freljord. Because four Freljord is a lot better than three Freljord, and three Freljord is already really, really good. Some other adaptations we can make to this composition right here. Of course, we could drop the Soraka for Scion, or we could simply just put in Scion at level 9. Another one we can do is simply throw in Aatrox. Aatrox is going to be fantastic here, just simply due to the fact that it's going to give us Slayer for our Gwen, give her a bit of healing. And then one thing you can actually do is once you get to Heimerdinger, you can easily drop Heimerdinger, uh, sorry, you can drop Ash for Heimerdinger, and essentially you won't need the Freljord anymore because you'll have the Armor and Magic Shred from the Heimerdinger. Right now, I think the best build for, builds for Heimerdinger are going to be either double Mechano plus Shrink or triple Mechano. 
Essentially, if you already have some form of armor or magic penetration, you can just go triple Makino and go for full damage off of him. But if you do need some form of armor or magic shred, I enjoy just going shred plus double Makino because two shred got nerfed and two Makino got bug fixed. That way it's actually good now. So that's my preferred Heimerdinger build. So this will a lot of times be like what your capped version of the composition ends up being like. You can even start throwing attack speed items on Heimer, especially if you have two or three Mechano, stuff like Rage Blade and Rapid Fire Cannon. If you get a Heimerdinger with triple Mechano, he's just going to start pumping out tons and tons of damage and will a lot of times just straight up out damage your three atom of Philios if you have something like this. So yeah, this is just a really strong composition. That being said, this is definitely the hardest of the variations to hit due to the fact that it caps out really high with expensive units and you want to be hitting a lot of expensive units. You really do want a Senna. You can theoretically run a Maokai in this variation right here because it'll synergize nicely with like the Taric for the Bastion, but I do think it's definitely not worth it. If I'm playing around Gwen and I don't have a Senna, I generally will just not play Shadow Isles in this setup just because playing something like a Callisto or a Maokai is just going to be too low value in my opinion. In terms of the best legend for the Aphelios compositions, I think for the first two being the Aphelios version and the Four Deadeye version, the best is going to be Master Yi because Pumping Up has really good synergy with Aphelios. He really just enjoys the attack speed. And I think in this one variation that Ezreal or Orn is going to be the best because you have multiple carries you want to have, right? You want to have a three atom Aphelios and a three atom Gwen and a three atom Sejuani and or Shen. So I think Ezreal and Orn are going to be the best to enable you to hit all those items for your carries. The next composition I have is going to be Auction Reroll. It's still very powerful, this composition, and you'll just see Auction sniping down enemies and killing them. Auction potentially caps higher than Aphelios does. Auction 3 is probably a lot better than Aphelios 2, but it is a bit harder to hit in Auction 3 than in Aphelios 2 usually, so the Aphelios comp is a little more consistent, whereas if you're sitting here with a lot of Auctions, you can just go for an Auction 3 at level 7 and be really, really strong. The main Auction variation is going to be what I have right here with the 3 Sharima and the 3 Freljord. You can also reroll for Lissandra 3 while you're going for your Auction 3 and dual carry her. She can take whatever AP items you have, and Sejuani or Shen will typically take your tank items. Uh, Nasus can also take your tank items as well. In terms of Auction itemization, his best item is going to be Deathblade, but in addition to that, Infinity Edge, Giant Slayer, and Guardbreaker are all going to be great. Runon's Hurricane is also another really good option on Auction. It did get nerfed this patch, like his interaction with Runon's is worse this patch, but it's still definitely fine to run. And in addition, I think Hand of Justice and Rageblade are okay on Auction. One thing I've heard people talk quite a bit about is that if you have one single bow on your Auction, he's going to ult at the same time as the Freljord proc. That is true, and that is nice if you can manage to get that. That being said, I wouldn't worry too much about that. If you need to put two bow items on your Auction, don't worry about it. It's going to be fine. One other note is if you itemize a Nasus 2, you can actually potentially give the Sharima buff to your Nasus. Remember that they changed the way that strongest units are calculated this patch. So if you have two, two units with the same amount of items, all you have to do is take out the unit and put it back in, and it'll be the strongest unit. So you can actually ascend your Nasus instead of your Auction if you want a bit more frontline, but if you feel like your frontline is secure, you can ascend your Auction just to allow him to do a bit more damage. So this comp really strong right here. Once you get to level 7, you'll roll for this, and then once you hit your units, just push to level 8, and you can start putting in stuff like Scion. Scion can simply just replace the Renekton, and then you can just play a Cassante instead, and this would be a more capped version of the board. One other variation you can do is actually this 4 Deadeye variation. I think it's a bit weaker if you have the Auction 3, but this variation is a lot better if you have Auction 2. One of the main reasons you might play this variation is if you're like contested Auction or you're not hitting your Auctions and you want to just push to level 8. So you can play a board like so. Of course, if you don't have the Scion, a common variation you might run at level 8 is simply just Taric plus Shen, which this should look pretty familiar. It's about the same as the 4 Deadeye variation I talked about with the Aphelios composition. So this is definitely something you can run if you're carrying an Auction and you have like Auction items, but you're sitting on a 2-star unit. Of course, if you can get the 3-star at level 8, it's going to be really strong because Auction also does use certain items better than Aphelios. Aphelios really needs a Rage Blade, so if you're sitting here without a Rage Blade, I actually think it's better to itemize Auction 2 over Aphelios 2 unless you have something like pumping up instead. In terms of the best legend for this composition, I have Orn. Auction actually uses multiple of the Orn items really, really well. Trickster's Glass is great. You can put it on Auction and then have two Auction 3s just sniping down the enemy team. Collector is also really good. Auction usually just gets a kill every single ult, so you can farm a lot of gold with Collector, and it's going to synergize nicely if you have Infinity Edge as well. And in addition, I think Sniper's Focus is also really good on Auction. A lot of the times he's hitting really far across the map, so it ends up having quite good synergy with him because it'll buff his damage up quite a bit. The next composition I have is going to be Ravenous Hunter Warwick. Now, the first thing to note is that you should only play this composition if you have the Ravenous Hunter Augment, as it won't work without it. Ravenous Hunter did get nerfed this patch, but Warwick actually got compensation buffs, so the comp is basically power neutral to where it was last patch, and it was extremely good last patch, so it is still extremely powerful. 
The first thing you need to note whenever you're playing this composition is that you do need near perfect itemization for your Warwick. Warwick needs a Quicksilver in order to function, and then you need some form of attack speed and a healing item. The best attack speed item is going to be Rageblade, but you can run a Rapid Fire Cannon instead, although it's a good bit worse. And then his best healing item is going to be Bloodthirster. You can run a Hand of Justice instead, although it's going to be a lot worse, and I wouldn't recommend going just like a Hand of Justice as his only healing, unless you happen to have some other healing source, something like a Cybernetic Leech or Harm Assist. If you have that, you can get away with a Hand of Justice instead of Bloodthirster on your Warwick. In terms of other itemization, you also can take spare AD items, Kaisa can take spare AP items, and Callista can be itemized if you manage to 3-star her. Whenever you're playing this board, you want to roll at level 6 for Warwick 3. So while you're rolling for Warwick 3, you can also potentially go for a Callista 3 at the same time, because 3 cost odds are pretty good at level 6. If you manage to 3-star Callista, you can start throwing items on her. She really likes items that give mixed AD and AP, so stuff like Giant Slayer and Jewel Gauntlet and Guard Breaker are going to be really good. Infinity Edge is also really good, Hand of Justice and Gunblade are really good as well. I also think that if you're running 6 Challenger, Titans is debatably one of her best items due to the fact that she's going to stack it up really quickly and enjoy all the stats that it gives. You aren't forced to run 6 Challenger with Warwick. I do think it is probably the most consistent variation. It allows you to stack up your Ravenous Hunter stacks as quickly as possible. But 4 Juggernaut variations are definitely strong as well. So you can simply just drop out of some of these Challengers right here. Of course, only dropping the Callista if you're not going for Callista 3. And simply just play the 4 Juggernaut, something like this. 4 Juggernaut, 4 Challenger, really good for Warwick. Makes him really tanky. He's going to be really hard to kill. If you end up having a Juggernaut Emblem, I really like putting it on Yasuo. He's going to use it quite well. And if I have a Juggernaut plus one, I'm generally just going to be running into some sort of six Juggernaut build. So we can simply just put in like a Darius right here. And this is the board. Six Juggernaut, four Challenger is really powerful. Your Warwick is basically not going to die. And it's just going to 1v9 the entire enemy team. Of course, whenever you're playing this composition at level six, you won't have most of these units right here. Your general level six board is just going to be four Challenger, two Juggernaut. So something like so. And then you can also just simply slot in a random Zaun unit, of course, and you'll usually be giving your Zaun to your Warwick. That being said, Warwick doesn't use Virulent Plague, so just keep that in mind. In terms of the best legend for this composition, I just have Poro because it gives you the highest odds of hitting Ravenous Hunter. One other note is that I think one of the best augments with this composition is going to be Long Distance Pals. Warwick gets a ton of stats with Ravenous Hunter, so you can essentially just Long Distance Pals your Warwick and then whatever other carry you have as your secondary carry. And that secondary carry is going to enjoy a lot of stats from the Long Distance Pals. Long Distance Pals, Ravenous Hunter is usually just a first place due to its synergy being insanely good. Next we have Talia Reroll. Still very, very strong this patch. You generally want to be playing this if you have either Double Trouble or Two Healthy. First I'll talk about Double Trouble, then I'll talk about Two Healthy. In terms of Talia itemization, she's not that picky. She has a lot of really good options. Deathcap, Jewel Gauntlet... Guardbreaker, Giant Slayer, Shoujin, Blue Buff, Gunblade are all going to be really good on her. You can throw any of them, any combination of them is going to be fine. It's really not that big of a deal what she has. Set is going to be taking your tank items here. He's going to synergize really well with Talia because every time he ults a target, she's going to throw a boulder and just do a bunch of damage. That's why we're running two Talias because each of them will throw a boulder at whoever Set knocks up with his ability. In terms of the best set items, I really like Vow and Spark. Spark's just going to be really good to guarantee a bunch of damage from your Talias. Just make sure your Spark is on the same side as your Talia's to maximize the damage they're doing. I really like Vow because it makes him one auto to cast, so he can just hold a unit at the start of the fight and have it get blown up by your Talia's. So if your opponent has something like a Jarvan that you want to kill at the start of the fight, you can just put your set in front of it with a Vow and just kill it immediately. So this is just the standard double trouble board at level 6 where you're going to be rerolling for Talia 3 set 3. Once you hit those two units, you're going to start pushing levels. You have a few options for what you can put in. An easy thing you can just put in at level 7 is just going to be a Juggernaut unit. Another thing you can simply just put in is going to be a Jarvan or even just a second Swain is also good to buff up your frontline. And once you get to level 8, what you generally want to do is start putting in Scion. Scion is fantastic because whenever he ults in a line, he knocks up every unit in his line, making your Talias do a bunch of damage. So the ideal board would be something like this with two Scions. Cassante also knocks up units, although he's a worse unit than Scion and is a lot less consistent, but Cassante is definitely viable to run on this board as well. If you're playing too healthy, your board is typically going to cap out something like this. The standard level 6 too healthy board is the same as the standard level 6 double trouble board. You'll just run two sets and two Talias. Now the one thing you may notice here is that I have two Talias, even though we don't have double trouble on this board. What you can do is if you have eight Talias, you can roll for a ninth Talia and then not buy it. Once the combat starts, you will buy that ninth Talia and start rolling until you get one more Talia. Once you hit the extra Talia, then you have 10 Talias, you can stop rolling, and you can start pushing levels. What this allows us to do is just throw in another Talia to give us more CC for more knockups and more boulder damage, and it will also allow us to get another 2 healthy proc for the team, buffing up the HP. Warwick is great here because he gives us another 2 healthy proc, and then of course gives Juggernaut with the set. 
And of course, once you start pushing levels, you're going to want to put in either Jarvan, Scion, or Cassante for the final slot. In terms of the best legend for this composition, I just have Poro because the augments this composition wants are the most likely to be hit with Poro. The next composition I have is going to be Fast 9 Belveth plus Ari. You typically can only play this composition if you're able to Fast 9, so you need some augment like level up to enable that, so that way you can roll a lot of gold at level 9. The core of this composition here is we're going to be primary itemizing our Belveth as the carry. She really wants Rapid Fire Cannon plus Healing, so either Gunblade, Hand of Justice, or Bloodthirster plus 1 for the damage item. Can be Deathblade, Giant, Slayer, Guard Breaker, Infinity Edge. And then we're going to also do a carry with Ari. Ari wants either Blue Buff or Shoujin. And then she just wants two other items, so stuff like Gunblade, Deathcap, Jewel Gauntlet, Giant Slayer, and Guardbreaker are all going to be good. And then we're typically going to be putting our tank items on Scion. Here I have two Scions, but you can run something like a Sejuani instead of the second Scion as well. You can even throw items on the Heimerdinger here as well. If you get like triple Mechano, you can start throwing stuff like a Rage Blade or a Rapid Fire Cannon just to buff up the attack speed of the turret. You can either go triple Mechano or double Mechano plus Shred. Uh, if you go double Mechano plus Shrink, They'll typically be going that if you don't have some other form of armor or magic penetration. If you have other, some other form of armor or magic penetration, you'll typically just go triple mechano, however. One other thing to note is that this patch that Belveth did get nerfed already got buffed, though. So this comp is still quite good. With the Belveth nerfs and actually Aatrox buffs, one variation you can go is actually put the same Belveth items on your Aatrox instead and carry him. If you're doing that, you may want to throw in like a Nasus over one of the Scions or something uh, to give him Juggernaut. It's a bit worse than Belveth 2 with the items, but it's actually not that much worse, and it is another out when you're level 9 playing this composition. In this Karma slot right here, this is just essentially giving us 3 Ionia for the Ari to buffer up as much as possible. That being said, if it's going to be a good region for your Rise, you typically want to be running Rise instead of the Karma here. The best regions are going to be Freljord, Sharima, Ionia, and Demacia, so if it's one of those, I'd rather play a Rise than a Karma right here. The best legend for this composition is going to be a Relian Soul because he's going to enable you to fast 9 the most. Typically, whenever you're playing Relian Soul, you'll take level up at 2 1. You'll also take the Relian Soul 4 2 augment, and that way you can get to level 9 and roll a ton of gold for this board right here because it's really, really expensive. The next composition I'd like to talk about is going to be Six Sorcerer. Now, Six Sorcerer is going to be really good if you have a Sorcerer plus 1. It still works without the Sorcerer plus 1. Your board would just be drop the Shen here, and then you would just play another Sorcerer instead. But it is going to be a lot better with the Sorcerer plus one because you can fit a board like this at level seven. Of course, you'd simply just play another Sorcerer instead of Ari. With this comp, you can either carry Lux or Velkaz. It is important to note that Lux 2 is, of course, better than Velkaz 2, but Velkaz 3 is a lot better than Lux 2. So if you think you can get to Velkaz 3, I would recommend carrying the Velkaz. If you don't think you can get to Velkaz 3, I would recommend carrying the Lux instead. In terms of itemization, Lux really wants Trojan plus Jewel Gauntlet. That's definitely her best build. I think that Gunblade, Giant Slayer, and Guardbreaker are all good options on her as well, though. You typically will just be putting two items on her because the Radiant goes on her, but sometimes you may want to do something like Shoujin, Jewel Gauntlet, and Gunblade on her, and just have the Radiant item go on either the Jarvan or the Sona in this build. In terms of Velkaz itemization, he wants either Shoujin or Blue Buff plus two, Jewel Gauntlet's going to be the best plus two, and then Guardbreaker, Giant Slayer, and Gunblade are all great options as well. In terms of frontline itemization, you don't need a ton of frontline items in this comp. You really just want like a spark for your frontline to maximize the amount of damage you're doing. Sunfire is also quite good on Swain. A lot of times I'll just itemize my Swain in the mid game and then not even bother selling him because he's a really good tank. He can also just use generic tank items. If you have a Val though, you really want to be putting that Val on your Jarvan. He's going to utilize it really well. Just cast at the start of the fight and CC down the enemy team. If you are going for a Sona 3, you can also potentially itemize the Sona as well. So a lot of times you'll go for Velkaz 3. And then if you can go for like a Sona 3, a lot of times you'll also have a Sorks Bat on her. You put Shoujin on her, and it's really good. Shoujin's going to be her best item. She's also generally going to be your Shiv Holder. She can also just use generic damage items, stuff like a Guard Breaker or Jewel Gauntlet as well. And so if I'm going for Sona 3, I would prioritize carrying her over your Lux. If you don't go for Velkaz 3, you can also transfer the Velkaz items over to Ari once you get to like Ari 2, because she's going to be a lot better than the Velkaz. She really likes blue buff. Shoujin is also fine on her, and then she wants plus 2. So Giant Slayer, Guard Breaker, Gunblade, and Jewel Gauntlet are going to be the best on her. Whenever I'm playing this composition, there's a few options for what I do. You'll typically want to roll on level 7 for this board, just due to the fact that you're going to be able to stabilize pretty easily at level 7. But whenever you're rolling at level 6, it can be a, for a board like so. This is just a really strong level 6 composition. You should be able to win streak stage 3 with it. So you definitely can roll level 6 at 3-2 to stabilize if you need to. If I have a Sorcerer plus 1, you can actually just stay at level 7 for the entire game and play essentially this board right here, except something else instead of the Ari, going for Velkos 3, Sona 3, and then potentially even Swain 3. And of course, if you decide to go to level 8, maybe because you're contested, don't think you can hit Velkaz 3, or you hit Velkaz 3 and you can just start pushing levels, the typical in at level 8 will be Shen. It's a little awkward. He's not the greatest unit for this board, but he's definitely going to be acceptable. If, however, that 
you don't have a sorcerer plus one, what you really do need to do is go to level eight. So that way you can actually play the board essentially just shown. So you'll play something like this at level eight if you don't have the sorcerer plus one. Uh, so you do need to make sure that you are able to go level eight. I would definitely prioritize going eight over hitting Velkos three if I don't have a sorcerer plus one. If you have a sorcerer plus two, however, you typically will want to be playing into some sort of eight sorcerer build. So something like this is going to be ideal. Really powerful. You're just going to one shot the enemy team. Eight sorcerer is a huge spike. It just does a lot more of the on death damage. So highly recommend eight sorcerer if you have the sorcerer plus two and have an Ari. I don't really recommend eight sorcerer if I don't have the Ari. Uh, just do the fact that your board is going to be pretty low in terms of unit quality. Of course, if you have Sorcerer plus three somehow, then feel free to play eight Sorcerer with the Ari, but I usually don't put in eight Sorcerer until I get Ari. There are variations where you run four Multicaster with your Valkaz, but after the four Multicaster nerf, I don't think it's going to be that good. So I would recommend steering away from them in favor of playing the six Sorcerer variations this patch. In terms of the best legend for this composition, I think it's going to be Vegar. Jewel Lotus is going to be really good for this board. You don't have to go Jewel Gauntlet on your Lux and Valkaz, and so they'll just really enjoy that bonus damage from him. One other tech you can do whenever you're playing Sorcerers is actually take Parting Gifts. I think it's one of the best augments for this composition, if not the best. If you go Parting Gifts, what you're going to want to do is make sure that you have no items on your frontliners except one or two ZZ Rots. Now, whenever you have Parting Gifts, you're going to throw ZZ Rots on these units like so, and then I typically will position my frontliners something like this uh, with my ZZ Rot in the front right here. What's going to happen is the Tarek will get first to target it. He'll die. He'll pass it over to whoever's next to him. They'll die, and then it'll get passed on to whoever is next to that. And you'll essentially cycle the ZZ Rots on your frontline here. That way they die one at a time and pass it to each other. And it'll just provide a lot of frontline. It works really well in this composition because this board is fine with just running ZZ Rots for the frontline. Uh, but parting gifts with ZZ Rot is viable in like a lot of compositions, but it's especially good on this board. In terms of some general positioning things for this composition, you just want Jarvan, of course, on the same side as the enemy carry. And I really like having my Sona next to whatever my carry is, whether it be Velkaz or Slux, just that way she gives the attack speed to them. You'll typically also want to have Sona on the opposite side of the enemy's carry, that way she can snipe them down and deal a bunch of damage to them. So if I'm carrying Velkaz, of course, I'll have my Sona next to my Velkaz like so. The one exception for this is if I have long distance pals, then I just give long distance pals to my Lux and my Velkaz. And Long Distance Pals actually works quite well in this composition because they're going to share the bonus AP from the Sorcerer. The next composition I have is going to be Noxus Darius plus Katarina Reroll. I talked about this composition in quite a bit of detail in my 13.13b video, so just check that out. It'll be linked in the description if you want to see more detail. As a quick rundown, you want to have Healing plus 2 on your Darius. The plus 2 can be Infinity Edge, Hand of Justice, Titans, Giant Slayer, or Last Whisper. Katarina really wants Healing plus 2. The best of the plus 2 is going to be Spark. But then she also really likes Jewel Gauntlet, Death Cap, Guard Breaker, and Giant Slayer as well. And then you'll essentially just roll at level 6 to make sure you win streak during stage 3. So you'll roll at either 3-1 or 3-2 level 6. Win streak during stage 3, get your Noxus stacks up. Go level 7 at 4-1. And then just stay at level 7 until you have Darius 3 and Katarina 3. Best legend for this composition, I'd say, is Vegar. They actually really like Lotus. Darius and Katarina both really like crit. As you can see here, I have Infinity Edge on Darius and Jewel Gauntlet on Katarina. So Vegar allows you to forgo those if you have Jewel Gauntlet. And then in addition to that, sorry, if you have Jeweled Lotus... And then in addition to that, Tiny Power is also quite good in this composition. They like the AD and the AP. Ascension is not very good in this board, but the other Vegar arguments are good. So Vegar, I think, is the best legend for it. The next composition I have is going to be Invoker Karma. This comp has come into the limelight this patch after Tarek, Soraka, and Karma have been buffed. And this comp is actually very, very strong right now. The idea of this composition is a lot of times you'll be going level 7 and rolling for Karma 3 at level 7. Or you'll be going level 8 on a Karma 2. I'll talk about when to do each of those in a bit. The core of your board here is going to be Karma, Lissandra, Soraka, and Shen for your four invoker, plus Tarek for more frontline, plus another Ionia unit. Ari's the best, but you could theoretically run any Ionia unit here instead. Whenever you're playing this board at level seven, what you can do is simply just throw in a spare unit. You could just throw in like a generic unit like a Jarvan here, or you could throw in like an Aphilios for the three Targon, or you could even throw in a Freljord unit, something like a Sejuani here, in order to enable you to do a bit more damage. One thing I see people do is they'll play 6 Invoker without an Invoker plus 1. I don't really like it unless you have a Rise. If you manage to get a Rise, this is the board you'll end up playing right here. Of course, this fits at level 8 with the 6 Invoker. I think without having a Rise, just having to play a Cassiopeia makes your board really, really weak, so I prefer to play 4 Invoker. That being said, if you have an Invoker plus 1, you can just play this board right here without the Rise at level 7, and it's going to be really strong. In terms of itemization, you do want to make sure that you have a 3-item tank in this. You really want to have a spark. If you don't have a spark, you do need a shiv, but I do think spark is a little bit better. In terms of itemizing Shen versus Tarek, I think Tarek 2 is better than Shen 1, but Shen 2 is going to be better than Tarek 2. 
and Taric 3 is going to be better than Shen 2, but Taric 3 is a bit hard to hit. So I do have itemized Shen right here. A lot of times, though, you will end up itemizing Taric 2 in the mid game because he's a bit better than Shen 1. Although Shen 1 is actually quite a beast in this composition anyways. Shen will just take whatever tank items you have, stuff like Warmog, Stoneplate, Bramble, or Vow or Redemption. Karma is going to be your main carry here. She's going to be taking your damage items. If you're playing a 6 Invoker variation, make sure that you don't have a mana item on her. If you're playing like a 4 Invoker variation, you can go for like a Shoujin on her. It'll be fine. In terms of Karma itemization though, she really just wants pure AP. Stuff like Death Cap and Archangels is going to be best on her. If you have a Death Cap or an Archangels, you can start going for damage amplification sources. So something like a Giant Slayer or a Jewel Gauntlet or a Guardbreaker is going to be good. I think Gunblade is also probably her best item in this build. Your frontline will be extremely tanky if you have a Gunblade. So highly recommend going Gunblade. Of course, if you have like Chalice or two on your Lissandra here, you can forego having like a bunch of flat AP and just start building into stuff like Jewel Gauntlet and Gunblade and Giant Slayer immediately. If you have Chalices, they'll typically go on your Lissandra in this composition. This is due to the fact that it's going to declump your frontline. First, it'll allow your Lissandra to ult at the start of the fight. You want your Lissandra next to your Karma anyways. That way, Karma gets damage amplification off of the target that Lissandra hits. In general, if you're running a Lissandra in your composition, you want her same side as your carry. And then Lissandra will actually walk up, so your board won't be clumped in the backline right here, and your Karma should be nice and safe from a lot of CC sources. So it's just really good synergy all around. Soraka 3 is definitely not necessary in this composition, but you can potentially go for her if you have the extra money for it. One other note I'd like to make is going to be about Karma itemization. Now, one thing I think a lot of people don't think about is actually going to be the way that her ult timings interact with Invoker and Ionia. Typically, you'll have Karma be getting the Ionia bonus at the start of the fight, which means she's going to immediately gain some mana. In addition, she's going to be getting an Invoker proc 3 seconds into the fight. If you have a tier item on Karma, it's going to be really powerful because she's going to be getting the Ionia proc at the start of the fight, giving her extra AP, and then she'll actually ult before the Ionia proc is over if she has a tier item. In addition, you want her to ult quick enough because if she doesn't ult quick enough, she's going to be ulting during the Invoker proc and she's going to lose out on mana. This is why Archangels is actually best in slot on Karma because it's going to allow her to ult really quickly while she still has the Ionia bonus up. And then she'll have ulted before the invoker proc, so she'll actually get the bonus mana from her first invoker proc. Another tier item also does this about the same too. So if you go something like a Shoujin or even a Hand of Justice on your Karma, it's going to be good. You don't necessarily have to have a tier item on your Karma, but if you do have a tier item on your Karma, it's just going to make her ult timings a lot better. Just watch for it whenever you're playing Karma with tier or without tier. You'll see that a lot of times the invoker proc just goes during her first ult if she doesn't have a tier, but if she does have a tier, it'll come after her first ult. In terms of the best legend for this composition, I think Vegar is pretty solid for this composition because uh, Dual Lotus is going to be really good for this board, although it doesn't necessarily love Vegar's other options. Yi is also okay. Gotta Go Fast is decent with this composition, uh, getting a bunch more mana from the Invoker value. Of course, pumping up is going to be pretty bad with this, so if you're taking Yi, you want to make sure that you're only going for Gotta Go Fast. Next, I'm going to go over the Zeri variations. There are going to be two var main variations I go over today, being the Piltover Zeri and the Four Gunner Zeri. In terms of Zeri itemization, she's really not that picky with her items. You can kind of throw whatever you have on her. You can use Last Whisper, Guardbreaker, Quicksilver, Gunblade, Infinity Edge, Giant Slayer, Rageblade, and Runon's Hurricane. All of those are going to be great on her. And then you're typically going to be throwing your tank items on your Sejuani in this comp. This variation right here is going to be the three Piltover variation. You're going to play this if you have early Piltover, and you can cash out a strong T-Hex. You want to make sure that your T-Hex has at least 30 stacks whenever you're playing this comp right here. We're going to be throwing the T-Hex on the frontline because we want to use it as supplemental frontline, as you can see here that the board is lacking a bit of frontline. One other note is that I do have Last Whisper even though Freljord is in. The thing is, Freljord only procs like 8 seconds into the fight, so you're losing 8 seconds of Last Whisper value without it. And then it also only lasts for like 10 seconds, so Last Whisper is still fine whenever you're running Freljord. In addition, you can also simply just put Last Whisper on whatever unit is next to the Zeri and then just throw another damage item on her instead. So maybe I throw like a rune on Surkin. This is another acceptable way to play it. Of course, if you have Zeeks, you can also throw them on your Jace because you typically want to be putting him next to Zeri anyways. So any Zeeks can go on your Jace in this board right here. If you want to start capping out this composition, what you're going to do is you're going to drop Vi for Scion and you are going to play a Heimerdinger instead. If you have a Last Whisper in this composition, you can go Triple Mechano with the turret. And if you don't have a Last Whisper, you want to go one Shrink plus two Mechano is going to be the ideal. Of course, with the board I showed earlier, if you get to level 8, I only had 7 units on it, you can just throw in a Shen at level 8 to help supplement your frontline, and he fits in pretty nicely. The other variation is going to be the 4-gunner variation. This one's going to be good if you're sitting here without 
tilt over, and so you don't want to play that T-Hex, because something like a 10-stack T-Hex isn't going to be that great, and we're going to be buffing up our Zeri damage a lot with the 4 Gunner. So this is just going to be the board right here, uh, and fits quite nicely. In terms of the best legend for this composition, both of these really like Yi. Zeri really enjoys the attack speed. She wants to stack up attack speed as fast as possible to get those Gunner stacks and start doing a lot of damage. In addition to that, Pengu is actually really good if you're going to be playing the Piltover variation, as it'll allow you to greed a bit more for your T-Hex. Let your T-Hex, you know, sacrifice a bigger loss streak and get some more stacks, so that way you can cash out a bigger T-Hex and make it really strong, because if you can get to like a 50-stack T-Hex, it'll be really powerful and can just win you games right there. There also are variations of Zeri where you go for like 4 Zon. In this board right here, we could drop like the Shen and Lissandra for 4 Zon, uh, and it should work out decently well. Uh, putting, you know, whatever carries on you have on your Zeri and whatever tanks on you have on your Urgot. So the board could look something like this. This is an acceptable board right here, of course, and then you could just simply go Vi instead. And this would be a board. So this is an acceptable variation as well. You'll typically be wanting to play this Forzond variation if you have Urgot items. So you can start putting stuff like Bloodthirster or Titans on him uh, in order to, like, justify playing it. Because you're losing a bunch of, like, regular frontline if you don't have this. As a final note for Zeri, if you manage to get 6 Zon with the Unstable Chemtake mod, I believe it's called, the one that makes your unit explode, it's really good to put the Zon emblem on a Jarvan and then throw a Vow on him to get him to cast as quickly as possible. He'll cast into the enemy team, and then whenever he dies, he's just going to explode and do a ton of damage in a 3 hex radius. That's why you need to make sure you have the 6 Zon with it, because it upgrades it to a 3 hex radius, and he'll just do a ton of damage and just blow up the enemy team. Zeri will be able to clean up, and you can a lot of times just win the game just off the back of that. We have Jarvan solo frontline here just to make sure he casts as quickly as possible and gets that damage out immediately. Of course, on this board here, you can drop Sejuani and Scion for three Piltover instead if you were running the Piltover earlier. I really only like this if you have the Zon plus one and can play the six Zon. Otherwise, I would recommend just playing one of the variations I was talking about earlier. The next composition we have is Garen. After the buffs, Garen is back and is winning games. He's actually quite good. He's not quite as powerful as he was in his heyday, but he is still a very strong composition if you can get it online. There's three main legends for Garen, and I'll talk about how to play it with each of them. On all these variations, you're just going to go level 7, play as many Juggernauts as possible with three Demacia. A one note here is that it's standard to run Sona, so that way she can buff attack speed, but if you manage to get Lux 2, you can run a Lux 2 here and throw AP items on her. The first way to play this is with Master Yi. If you have Master Yi, you're first going to want to prioritize a Bloodthirster on your Garen and then a Titans, and then you'll throw whatever AD items you have on your Darius and tank items on your Nasus. You typically want to be taking pumping up if you have Master Yi, and that's going to be giving Garen the attack speed he needs. The other way to play it is with Vegar, and you take Jeweled Lotus, and you can actually go Rageblade instead of the Titans. Sorry, not the Bloodthirster, instead of the Titans. That way you have the Rageblade to buff up the Garen's attack speed, and the Jeweled Lotus is buffing up Garen's damage. You can even take Tiny Power as well, because Garen likes both AD and AP, so it synergizes quite nicely on this board right here. The final way to play it is if you have Twisted Fate, you can go for Zeke stacking. This is the variation that was ran commonly on the very first patch. I actually think this is my least favorite variation in this patch, but this is another viable way where you just go as many Zeeks as possible with Twisted Fate. So yeah, that's pretty much just the Garen composition. Just roll level 7 for this board. If you hit Garen 3, Darius 3, you're probably top 2, and if you miss them, you're probably 8th. After some buffs, Built Different is back, but only if you have the Prismatic. I would not play Built Different with the Gold, as Gold Built Different is debatably the worst augment in the game, but Prismatic Built Different is actually very, very strong, and it's quite flexible. You typically want to go level 7, level 8, and just start playing around as many 4 costs as you can. The premier frontliner for Built Different is going to be Jarvan. He really enjoys it because he doesn't really need his traits to be defensive, so you really want to play as many Jarvans as you can. One, two, three Jarvans is fine. You can literally just drop these random frontliners here for three Jarvins. A Jarvin 2 plus two Jarvin 1s is going to be completely acceptable. Sejuani and Nasus are also decent frontliners as well. They don't love it as much. Nasus actually uses Build Different decently well. Sejuani doesn't love Build Different, but she's definitely fine in this composition, so you can run like one or two Sejuanis. That being said, if you hit a Scion, he's a lot better than Sejuani. Scion really benefits from Build Different. He's going to double dip on the extra HP because he revives, and then he also likes the attack speed a decent amount too. So you can start playing Scions once you hit those. In terms of carries for this composition, I think Aphilios is my favorite, but Kaisa is another good one. Azir would be a good one, but you want to be running Jarvan, so Azir is actually not that great with this composition. You can run Zeri, but I think she's a bit worse than Aphilios. And I also think Gwen actually does pretty well with this as well, because you don't want to be running tra traits really with your Gwen. Like, she a lot of times wants the two Shadow Isle through Slayer, but she doesn't necessarily need it. In terms of itemization, Aphilios can just take whatever AD items you have. You don't really need a Rage Blade in this because you already have a lot of attack speed. Kaisa just wants whatever AP items you have. Deathcap, Shoujin, Jewel Gauntlet, Hand of Justice, Giant Slayer Guardbreaker, that stuff. Gwen wants a healing item plus two damage items. So something like a Hand of Justice or Bloodthirster plus two is going to be ideal for her. 
So you go something like Hand of Justice plus Titans plus Death Cap. That's going to be a really good Gwen build for this composition. I had a Senna on the board initially just because she's a good flex unit, but you don't necessarily have to run that. You can also run a Yasuo in this composition if you're not running Kaisa as a carry. So you maybe have like AP items on your Gwen. You can run a Yasuo. He'll benefit a decent amount from Built Different as well. So whenever you're playing Built Different, you typically just want to be playing around as many four costs as possible. And it's quite flexible. In terms of the best legend, Poro is good because it gives you the highest odds of hitting Built Different. I also think Ezreal and Ornn are really good because they enable you to just get a bunch of items because this comp really enjoys having multiple carries. Like you can easily do a setup right here with like a Phileas plus Gwen plus Kaisa trio carry and it's going to be really good. So Ezreal and Ornn just enable that really hard. Also, whenever you're playing this composition, you typically just want to go for like triple combat augments. You're just going to have so much power. If you can get something like social distancing to scale off of your Built Different, Built Different will give you attack speed HP. Social distancing will give you like AD and AP, and then you could even go something like Unified Resistance, get Armor MR. You're just going to have so many stats, and you can just overpower the enemy team. So this comp really likes just flat combat power augments. The next comp I have is going to be Casted in Soraka. Now, this is a bit of a new composition that's pretty underrated right now, but it can actually do really well. The idea with this comp is you're going to go level 6 and reroll for Casted 3, Soraka 3, and have them dual carry. You're going to kind of stall out fights and let Soraka do a lot of damage. Casted actually does a decent amount of damage as well. Because of this, you want to make sure that you have three items on both of them. Casted in Itemization is typically going to be Healing plus Titans plus 1. Spark is going to be really good just to enable, you know, enough damage from the Kassadin and the Soraka. That being said, if you have a Shiv, you could forego the Spark for like another Titans or another healing item. You could go Bloodthirster or Hand of Justice or Gunblade for the healing item on Kassadin. Titans is really good on Kassadin because he's actually going to be tanking a lot and doing a lot of damage. So he really enjoys the fact that Titans is going to be scaling both, both up his AP and his tankiness because also AP is going to scale up his shield. In terms of Soraka itemization, you want to make sure you have Shojin so she casts as much as possible and keeps your Kassadin alive. In addition, you're going to want some flat AP source that'll typically either be a Death Cap or an Archangels. And then for a final item, you could go another Death Cap or Archangels, or you could go with some other damage amplification source, so something like a Jewel Gauntlet, Giant Slayer, or a Guard Breaker. You can also throw spare AD items on your Philios and spare tank items on your Shen in this board. At level 8, you can simply just throw in Fort Invoker, so you could just throw in Rise plus Karma. Another thing you can do at level 6 is you can simply go for Galio 3, especially if you have something like too healthy and you're sitting here with a lot of Galios, you could go for Galio 3, and instead of playing 4 Bastion at level 6, you can simply just play 4 Invoker, and then once you manage to get to level 8, you can simply go back into the 4 Bastion like so, and play a board like this. In addition, Senna is going to be really good in this composition due to the fact that you're going to be running the 3 Targon, so in the variation we were talking about earlier with the 4 Bastion, of course, Senna is a great add-in as she's going to make this board a lot tankier. In terms of the best legend for this composition, I just have Vagar because he's going to buff up Cassidence and Soraka's damage a lot with the Jeweled Lotus. The final comp I have today is going to be a new one, and this is going to be Cho'Gath plus Malzahar reroll. This comp is definitely good. It's not the greatest thing in the world, but it can definitely easily top 4 if you hit the units. The idea for this is you're going to roll at level 4, level 5, hit Cho'Gath 3, Malzahar 3, then start pushing levels for 6 Void. You're going to be itemizing the Cho'Gath and Malzahar. Cho'Gath wants to take whatever tank items you have. You usually want to spark because he's going to be doing a good amount of magic damage, as, was, as will the Malzahar. Just maximize the damage they're doing, and then just two tank items. Bramble, Dragon's Claw, Sunfire, Redemption, Vow, and Stoneplate are all good on him. Malhazahar is going to be taking whatever AP items you have. I really like to have a Shojin plus two. Jeweled Gauntlet, Deathcap, Guardbreaker, Giant, Slayer are all good on him. You typically just want to make sure that you have full damage on your Malzahar, so that way he's chunking through things pretty quickly. And you'll be really strong in the mid game with this composition. Once you start pushing levels, you'll just get into six void, put in the Rift World, and you'll have a board like so. If you manage to get a Void plus 1, you can drop out of the 4 Sorcerer and simply just go for 8 Void. Also, I have Oriana 3 right here. You don't necessarily have to go for Oriana 3. She's just an additional thing you can roll for if you're going for Malzahar and Cho'Gath. She can hold your Shiv as well. If you don't hit Oriana 3, you can drop her for Ari or Elux. If you have spare AP items, you can throw them on your Kai'Sa in this board right here once you get to Kai'Sa 2, and she should be able to do a decent amount of work as well. I think this board is somewhat situational, so I wouldn't like go in forcing it every game. But if you're sitting there with a lot of Malzahars and Cho'Gath and can start getting some Cho'Gath stacks early, or you have something like Golden Ticket and can't guarantee you hit everything pretty quickly, it definitely can do well. For the best legends for this composition, I have Vegar and Vladimir. Vegar is going to be really good to scale up Malzahar's damage as much as possible, and Vladimir is going to be really good to make your board a lot tankier. Cho'Gath's damage does actually scale off of his HP, and the Bruiser is going to scale off the HP decently well too, so Vladimir will work well in this composition as well. If you made it to the end, I want to thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this content, make sure to subscribe.